We are here at the top of Mount Timbiwa, which is up near the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, and I'm lucky enough to be spending the Chrissy break around here. So I figured it'd be rude not to bring some of the kit along to take some photos of the night sky as well. It's pretty dark around here. We're away from the major cities. It looks fantastic. Like looking up right now, uh, it, it's just nuts. So I brought a lightweight kit that I can chuck in a backpack bar the tripod. Obviously I had to lug that thing up as well, but this is a Benro Polaris tracking mount. You've seen me use it before and I have videos about this but it's a small lightweight tracker that moves the camera with the sky and basically lets me take all of these photos. The not so secret weapon in taking good photos of the sky is that you need lots and lots of exposure time. So you need this camera to be taking photos for a very long period of time to really collect enough light to make the object visible because the stuff that we're taking photos of is so dim that I mean, where this camera's pointed now, I can't even see anything with my eyes. We're taking a photo of the tadpole region, they call it. So it's a big hydrogen alpha emission zone. It's all going to be red and lots of different color. And we can't even see anything there with our eyes in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I've got this camera going and taking 15 second exposures, one after another. It'll never stop. It's going to be going bang, 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 bang. Hopefully for a bit over an hour tonight, as much as I can stand out here, I'll stack all of the photos together and hopefully with all of those images, the signal will come through and we'll see a bit of action. Now that I've set this thing up and it's staffing away, I can kick back and relax, take a little look outside our sphere and yeah, we'll see how she goes. We're back, we're looking at the images and that night actually went really well. I ended up staying there for a bit over two hours. So we shot the tad bowls and I also shot something else that we'll show you as well. I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a peep into what goes on behind the scenes to make these images look the way they do. So here we have a stacked image of the tadpoles. This is a bit over an hour worth. And as you can see, it looks like nothing. <laughs> and this is the way it works. When you stack all of these images together and calibrate them, they get put into what's called a linear form. So the data needs to be stretched to make it visible. I'll show you how I stretch this image. So what we do is we do what's called a histogram transformation. I'll move this window over and essentially we stretch the image by moving the histogram around. As you can see on the left, we see some stars coming out. So I'm going to press apply. And the whole point is we move these sliders around and we do it again and again and again. And slowly you can see this histogram here starts getting wider gets stretched out and that's what we want. So looking not to clip too much of the image, but here we go. Look, we start getting a bit of action. So I think this is, look at the data we got on these tadpoles. It's awesome. I mean, we can zoom in here and have a look and this is no editing. This is the total raw stretch from the camera. Wicked. So we'll close this out. Now, what I like to do is you can see in this image, the stars are really overpowering. And this actually isn't realistic because the stars over time, they, they bloat. When you get lots and lots of data, the stars are actually very bright in comparison to everything else in the frame and they get too big. So I've got a little script here to reduce the size of these stars back to what would be a bit more realistic. So we're gonna run this. So shout out to Deep Space Astro for putting this script together. It's a ripper. I'll link him below. But here we go. Now it looks better. So these stars have been reduced. They're a bit smaller. Now what we can actually do is go back into this and stretch this image out a little bit more. Now I'm going to export this as a TIFF. And we'll run it through Photoshop for some finishing touches. This is the only paid tool I use. Unfortunately, Adobe love it. So there's nothing you can do about it except pay up. So I open it all through the camera raw filter and this way it's kind of like Lightroom, it's good. So I usually put a little bit of contrast in, bring the whites up, offset that by bringing the exposure slightly down and we add a little bit of saturation. So I don't touch vibrance with astrophotos. Usually when I'm taking photos in the real world, vibrance is great and I touch that over saturation most of the time. It works by saturating some of the less dominant colors in the image, but because astrophotography is so simple color-wise, that tends to get a bit too selective and it kind of messes the image up. So I don't touch vibrant, I just saturate. And tell you what, bringing that slider up, 
Look at the colour coming through. Awesome. There you have it. How awesome is that? So, that's image one. So now, this is the other image I took, and this one I'm absolutely pumped with. So again, it's completely black, it's in the linear form, but let's have a little look at this and start stretching this one out. So it looks very unsuspecting at first. So let's just continue to stretch. Look at this, we start seeing a little bit of action. Going to keep stretching it. And now we're talking. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? So this is the ghost nebula, called the Tinbiwa ghosts, and we have this big, beautiful red beam going through the center, which is actually part of the Barnard's Loop, part of the Orion Nebula. So, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the last image. We'll make the stars look a bit smaller and more natural, get rid of the green noise, and I'll bring it into Photoshop and we'll finish it off. Okay, this one's in camera raw, and just check out what we've got here. This is an awesome photo. The detail is just amazing. So it goes to show what you can do with the Benro Polaris. This is an uh, this is an impressive image, especially at 300 millimeters. Look how good the stars are. So we're gonna add a bit of contrast. I'm gonna do basically the same thing I did to that last one. So, so my aim with this kind of processing is to try and keep the image look the way it's meant to. But I don't go too crazy. Now I'll tell you what, look at this. What an awesome, awesome image. Look at this action we've got going on. So this is where the Benro Polaris is great because comparing it to even a full-fledged setup like this, the Polaris holds its own. I mean, this is a great image. We're really talking sharp stars, it's clear. What more could you want? Hiked at the top of the mountain with it? I mean, life's pretty good. So I'll put a video together about how I do a little bit more of the nitty gritty stuff, but I also thought this would give you guys a, a bit of an interesting insight into how I chop these photos together. So let me know what you think down below. It really helps with channel engagement. I'm a, I'm a really new channel, so any likes or comments you give me, positive or negative, will help the algorithm. So I'd, uh, I'd really appreciate that. And well, see you in the next one, hey?